In section 9.4, we're going to talk about matched uh, or paired samples. We sometimes talk about these as uh, dependent samples. And it's going to be a T distribution here. Uh, we're still looking at two groups, but we're going to merge them together and look at the difference between them. And so the difference between independent and dependent um, is going to be, for example, if I'm comparing um, uh, uh, males and females, and I'm trying to do a test on them, and I just get a group of 30 males and 30 females, and I ask them what they think about relationship status. The third person in, in uh, the female set is not related to the third person in the male set. They're just, you know, the, the order really doesn't matter. However, if I do the same thing, but this time I'm looking at married couples. So now the third person in the female set is somehow related or dependent on the third person in the male set. So they're kind of combined together like ordered pairs. And that's what we mean by dependent. Uh, both sets are kind of linked up together. So we're going to kind of have them as those matched pairs. And so they said it's a T distribution, sometimes called uh, dependent samples. And so here we'll look at an example where we have uh, seven eighth graders at uh, Kennedy Middle School measure how far they could push uh, the, the shot put uh, with their uh, dominant writing hand and then their weaker non-writing hand, okay? So uh, they thought they could uh, push equal distances with either hand. So they thought they could just do it the same uh, with the dominant or the weaker hand here. And so notice that these guys are dependent to one another. If I pick a student here, these scores are combined. It's the same student. So a lot of times for dependent stuff, it is the same student comparing something or the same subject or a before and after case as well. So we don't want to mix these up out of order. We want to make sure that they're uh, combined. So those matched pairs there. Okay, so here's kind of the data that we get. And so... Before we do a full hypothesis test, let's look at the first step of setting up the null and the alternative. And so the null and alternative, here we go. And so we are comparing um, means here because we're gonna look at the averages. So we're still gonna be using mu in this case. But what we want to look at is uh, the differences between the two to see if one is actually, you know, uh, you could throw further or not than the other. And what we're trying to figure out is if they push equal distances. So if we have the mu of the dominant hand, and uh, we're going to say that that uh, equals the mu of the weaker hand, so the average of those. And that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra. If you recall, uh, we could go ahead and actually subtract the mu w on both sides here. And so that's going to give us uh, mu sub d minus mu sub w equals to zero. So we're moving everything to the left side here. And then we're going to use a uh, notation here. If we're talking about the um, uh, difference here, we're going to relate that as mu sub d. Um, and again, I should have probably used um, a different notation here. Let me call this uh, mu of dominant hand and then mu of weaker hand, just to get the notation straight there. So uh, technically that mu sub d, we're gonna refer to mu of the difference between the two there, okay? And so we're gonna say that the difference is gonna be that it is, uh, that they could pull the uh, equal distance. So if we're saying that they are are going to do it the equal distance, they're going to push equal distance, we're saying that there's uh, no difference pretty much. And if there's no difference, that means uh, it's going to be zero in that case. So again, if we're comparing how much money we have, I have $20, you have $20. If we take the difference, it's zero. So that means there's no difference there. So when we do the null and alternative, we're always going to relate it to zero in this case. Let's look at a different one here. And so in this case, a uh, college football coach was interested in a strength development class. So they're looking at the weight that was lifted prior to the class and then the amount of weight that was lifted uh, afterwards. And so uh, what we're trying to see here is um, 
Uh, he asked four of his players to participate in the study. The amount of weight they could each lift was recorded before they took the strength development class. After completing the class, the amount of weight they could each lift was again measured. And here's the data here. And so we're, what we're interested here is whether the college's strength uh, development class could increase. Okay, and so that's what we're looking for, whether it could increase. So we're going to have our null, our alternative, and we're going to put mu sub d, again, because we're looking at the difference here. And so we're trying to see if it would increase it. So we're going to have um, prior and then afterwards. So I'm going to go mu sub p and then mu sub a. So we're looking at prior and after. And if we say that it increases, then that means it's going to be greater than. Okay. Now, again, let's use some algebra and move everything to the, I'm sorry, it's going to be uh, less than. Mu sub p is less than mu sub a. And so we're going to use some algebra, move everything to the left-hand side to set it, um, uh, to put it uh, zero by itself on the right hand. So now we have that the difference is going to be less than zero. Another way of doing this, uh, this setup here is since we know it's going to be um, set to zero here, what we could actually do is just write out the difference here. So mu sub prior minus mu sub afterwards. And since we want this to increase, we know that afterwards is going to be larger. That makes um, prior smaller here, okay? And if we recall from algebra, if you subtract two numbers, we always use the sign of the dominant one. So since afterwards is larger and it has a negative, this should be negative. And so mathematically, how we say negative is less than zero. So there's another way to kind of think through the claim here. So mu sub d is less than zero, and this time uh, the alternative is going to be our claim. And by default, we always get uh, equals to zero. Okay. This is one of the more trickier null and alternatives to set up because um, we're comparing them to one another and we're looking at the differences between the two. Okay. Let's look at a full example here. So match pair uh, or dependent, sometimes we call them. So study was conducted to investigate the effectiveness of uh, hypnotism in uh, reducing pain here. So um, the results of randomly selected subjects are shown here below. A lower score indicates less pain. So lower the score, less pain here. And then we got the subjects before, and then we got a uh, score for them afterwards, okay? Uh, the differences have a normal distribution, so again, letting us know that. And are the sensory measurements uh, on average lower after hypnotism here? And test with a 5% significance. So again, we're looking at the differences, so that's going to be the first thing we want to, uh, to set up here. And we're looking at the differences of, and let's put after minus before, okay? And uh, let me kind of write where I got these here. So uh, side note, we're going to subtract all of these. So I'm going to go afterwards and before. So I'm going to take these two and I'm going to subtract them. And that's where I'm getting that point two from here. And I'm going to do this for each of the ordered pairs here. I'm going to go after minus before here. And then that's going to give us negative 4.1 in this case. And we're going to do this for all of the matched pairs all the way through. We're going to want to subtract them. And then we'll go ahead and uh, write them. And I'll just change that to get a little bit more space here. Okay. Now, notice what's happening here. When it's positive, notice my after ends up being larger than the before, right? That makes a positive value there. If it's negative, then that means that after was smaller. And again, we could kind of see that using that, uh, you know, for subtracting two values, we always keep the sign of the dominant value there. Okay, so uh, this is what we're looking at, the differences between these two. And whether it's positive or negative, that indicates whether uh, before or after is larger. And this is why we relate it to zero, because zero is kind of the, the gatekeeper for where a number is positive or negative. Okay, so let's get into our four-step process here. So the null and alternative, okay? And the first thing we want to do is set up this claim. And so we're saying that um, in this case, that mu sub after is going to be um, uh, greater than mu sub uh, before in this case. 
And actually, no, we want to go the other way around because we're saying that it's going to help with pain. So we want to lower um, uh, pain score Yeah, as we go up. So afterwards should be smaller. So that's what we're saying, that afterwards is going to be less than. Again, if we move everything to one side here to get zero, now we could talk about the difference is less than zero. And so that's going to help us out to set up our claim here. Again, another way of thinking about it is that uh, before should be larger and after should be smaller. And so that means this is going to be negative, which is less than uh, zero. Okay. So our known alternative is going to be uh, mu sub d is less than zero, and that's the claim. And then mu sub d for the difference is equal to zero. Okay, let's move on to our next step. Let's go ahead and get some stats and some data here. And what I'm interested in is actually the average standard deviation and n of the differences. So what I'm doing is I'm going to actually plug this guy in here into list 3. And we're just going to run a one var stats on list three on the difference. So notice that I'm using a subscript of D on everything. So it's the average of the difference, the standard deviation of the difference, and then the sample size of the difference, which should be the same for the sample size anyways. Okay. And all I did there was run a one var stats in order to get those values. On list three and you could actually plug this into um, if you go into list three on the top you could actually just plug in L2 minus L1 and it would subtract all of them for you which is helpful if you have a very long list okay so let's see here now our graph and our calculations and this is a T distribution so again it's fairly normal here um, right, it's telling us that it's normal here and we're looking at the differences between the two, okay, which is going to be, so we're looking at the average of the differences. Or we could talk about this also in terms of T-scores. And so zero is going to be in the middle for both of them. This is going to be a left-held because it is uh, less than here. And so let's go ahead and uh, shade that region there. And this is going to correspond to our T-critical value. So this shaded region is going to correspond to our alpha. Okay. So there's our alpha, um, our p-value, test statistic, critical value. So these are all the values you want to get here. And we're running a t-test for dependent. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a regular t-test, the one sample one, but we're going to run it on the the data or the stats for the difference of them. It gets both lists and it merges them together, okay, into one. So it's still two samples, but it's merging them because we're looking at the difference here. And so we run at regular t-test, we're going to get these values here. And so, again, this is our alpha, and then we see that our p-value is less than uh, alpha. And so it's going to be contained within that critical region. So right inside here is going to be that uh, p-value. And that corresponds to the cutoff of our t-test statistic, again, which is what our calculator ends up giving us here. And so let's go ahead and do our discussion and conclusion. P-value is less than alpha, so we reject the null. Do not reject the alternative. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that hypnotism reduces pain. And just to clarify a couple of things here, inverse T is how we could get that T critical um, or that T um, a critical value if we wanted it. Again, area to the left and then degrees of freedom there. And our degrees of freedom is seven. So one less than the, than the sample size because we have eight uh, ordered pairs, so our degrees of freedom will be 7 in that case. And our distribution would still just be T7 in this case.
And so here, I just wanted to show you some of the input commands. So notice I went under uh, one var stat when I went to go do this. And look at how here, I actually just put L2 minus L1, and I'm on the top menu here. If you put that and hit enter, it's going to go ahead and give you all the differences. So you don't have to calculate them one at a time. It's going to go ahead and give all that for you. Make sure you input everything correctly into here. We're looking at the differences, and you have the mu uh, is less than here. And notice that we are putting a zero, right, for the test there. And that's going to give you your uh, test statistic and your p-value.